am I the asshole for holding my wedding at the same venue as my first husband's funeral? <laughs> <laughs> That's so me. <laughs> That's so some shit I would do. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, let's see. Let's see. Let's get the okay. context. <laughs> Last summer, my first husband passed away after being in a car accident a month before. The doctors expected him to pull through, yet be paralyzed from the waist down. But he already had health problems, and the trauma from the accident ultimately prevailed. I and his parents organized a funeral at a spacious old Catholic cathedral. I kept thinking to myself the whole time, this place is too beautiful for a funeral. For some reason, it felt wrong having such a sad occasion there. I even remember wishing that I had married my first husband there instead of the outdoor wedding we had. Fast forward to early 2022. I reunited with an ex-boyfriend of mine from years before. We started dating again. And it's always the ex. It's always back. the one they told you not to worry about. And before we knew it, we were engaged. I've been criticized a lot for how fast I moved on, but I guess everyone heals differently. We started planning for the wedding in March. The wedding hasn't happened yet. It will be in May. And we decided that we'd have it at the same cathedral where my first husband's funeral was held. I'm still in contact with my first husband's parents, and they were happy for me when I told them I was dating and when I got engaged. In a phone call, my first husband's mother asked about the wedding, so I said that they could come if they wanted to. She seemed a bit taken aback at first, so I totally thought I screwed up, but she then said she'd love to. Then I told her that it would be held at the same cathedral as my first husband's funeral. And dot, 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 she went off on me. I don't know how to explain what happened other than to just write the conversation down. Me. We will be marrying at the blank cathedral. Silence. Her. I just can't believe it. Believe what? Silence. I'm sorry. This is just appalling to me. Me. I want to have our wedding there in honor of first husband. I would have married him there if I knew about the place. Silence. Her. You're moving on too quickly. You need to slow down. Think of how first husband would feel. You can't replace him. You've moved on. You've moved on. Blank first husband's name hasn't moved on. He will never move on. Because he's dead. And I'm sure if he were alive, he'd want to. Me, I'm sorry. She hangs up the phone. I haven't spoken to her or her husband since. I'm still planning on having me and my fiance's wedding there. But it just puts a bad taste in my mouth knowing that my first husband's parents are against it. But after all, they aren't involved in the wedding anyways, so I don't see why they should have a say. I wish they'd at least support me because I've been to hell and back. I'm in a better place and they don't like to see me happy. But I also kind of feel selfish since they aren't. Am I the asshole? Definitely the asshole. Yeah. There's a million places you could have your wedding. And like, I understand her like thought process of like, I'm honoring. But I think in if that's the way that you're thinking right now, then you're still in one of the fucking five stages of grief. You're, you might still be in denial, babe. Story time about the girl who was weirdly obsessed with my best friend. So a little background information. I was 14 and in ninth grade and I went to a private school. So there was only one class per grade. So my best friend and I were in class together and we're going to call her Bella. And then there was this girl, Gabby, who had kind of been friends with for almost a year. Well, Gabby was a whore for popularity. Like anything that the popular kids would ask her to do, she would get on her hands and knees and do it. This woman did not care. Well, we had a project working up, so all three of us decided to work on it together. So I invited them over my house and Gabby said that she needed to use the bathroom. So Bella offered to show her where the bathroom was. Probably three minutes later, Bella comes running up the stairs like she just saw a ghost. She was telling me that Gabby took all of her clothes off and tried making out with her. Well, that night they both spent the night and I wake up in the middle of the night to Gabby pinning Bella to the wall trying to kiss her. But I went back to sleep and acted like nothing ever happened. Fast forward, it got to the point where Bella was actually feeling really unsafe, so her parents switched her schools. Story time about how my boyfriend and best friend were sneaking around behind my back. So a little background information, I was 15 and in 10th grade. So my mom and dad were split up and I was pretty much allowed to do whatever I wanted because of that. So I was dating this boy named Jacob. Well, my best friend Alice literally hated him. Like low-key, every once in a while, she would try to break him and I up. And when I would call her out on it, she would just deny it. Anyway, so the one day I didn't go to school because I was super sick. So the whole day I was trying to text Jacob and Allison, but nobody was answering me. Which was extremely weird because no matter what, Allison would always text me back. So after I knew the school ended, I went to Allison's house. Nobody was answering the door, so I used the spare key. I walk in and all I hear is a very loud banging coming from her bedroom. So I walk in, I see my boyfriend and her together. And then he starts saying that she drugged him. So I went on his phone, I see a bunch of old text messages between him and her and them exchanging pictures. And then sis wants to start giving me an attitude, so I punched her in the face. And then I left and I don't talk to either of them. 
story time about how I almost got kidnapped by my online boyfriend. So a little background information, I was 16 and in 11th grade. So a year before this all happened, I posted a picture on Instagram saying, add me on Snapchat if you want to be friends. Yes, I was that person. Anyway, so this really cute guy adds me on Snapchat. And after about three months talking, he said that he wants to meet me in person. And he didn't sound sus at all, so I was like, sure. So we met at this park that was like 30 minutes away. And we met there around 6 o'clock, so when the sun was setting. And he was super nice, it was super romantic. Well then we went to his house, we watched a movie, and we did the nasty. So after that, he asked me if I want a drink. And what I could have swore was 20 minutes later, I wake up in an abandoned farm shed. With no clothes or anything. So I start screaming my head off. I don't have my phone or anything, so I start to run. And then he grabs me. He says, if you try to run or you try to scream, I am going to kill you. Life for part part two about how I almost got kidnapped by my online boyfriend. So like I said, I wake up in this abandoned farm shed. I don't have no clothes. I don't have a phone. So I try to run and he grabs me. He says that if you run, I will kill you. So I was like, okay, fine. What do you want from me? So he starts putting on lingerie and tells me to also put some on so we can take pictures together. What the actual, you know what? So after that, he starts crying and he starts telling me his whole life story and how he's not who I think he is. Turns out that he's 32 and he just goes online pretending that he's 17 years old. So I just try to comfort him, right? It ends up working. He brings me my clothes, tells me to run or else he's going to once again kill me. So I run. I go to this gas station, get picked up by the police, find my parents. Luckily for me, I paid attention to where everything was. He was arrested. He's still in prison to this day and I got grounded for three months. Weeks. So I got very embarrassed by this. Because they started going around the school telling everybody about it. And not to sound like that person, but I was really popular. I had a lot more friends than them. And the only reason why people liked them was because they were my friends. Anyway, so I started texting the boys that they liked. And I was like, hey, I think you should know that they've been talking to other people while they're talking to you. And I just thought that that was really wrong. And when they asked who, I gave them names of boys that they both used to talk to. And then when the girls texted me about it, like for part too about how I ruined my ex-best friend's relationship and reputation in two days. So like I said, I texted the boys that they liked saying that they were talking to other people. And then of course my ex-best friends got mad and then they started texting me about it saying, oh, why are you lying? Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, honestly, I just think it's really wrong for you to try and play these boys who actually have feelings for you. Yes, I know I was a little crazy, but who isn't? Anyway, so then I decided to get my mom involved because I had been friends with these girls for a while. So my mom knew their parents very well. So I told my mom I was really worried about them because they were starting to get into really bad stuff and hanging out with the wrong crowd. So I couldn't be friends with them. And they tried to talk me into doing stuff. So then my mom called their parents. Well, then their mom started to drop them off and pick them up every day because they were grounded. Well, then their mom started to apologize to my mom because their kids were such bad influences on me. And then when everybody asked why we stopped being friends, I told them that they made fun of my grandma who isn't alive. And four years later, Later, everybody still hates them. Story time about how I caught my grandma with my dad. So a little background information, I was 16 and it was the first day of 11th grade. Well, my friend wanted me to come to the mall with her after school that day. She was like, screw your grandma's birthday, just come to the mall with me. So the plan was I would sneak onto my best friend's bus after school and skip my grandma's birthday. By the way, my grandma was low-key a hoe. Like half of her kids won't even bring their husbands around her because after she got their number, she would end up sending nude pictures to them. Anyway, so the end of the day rolls around and I go to my locker to get my book bag. When I'm called down to the office so i go down to the office and my mom is there to pick me up because she said that we needed to do a few things before our grandma's party well my grandma was at our house getting ready and my mom forgot her wallet at home so when we went back home i went to go put my book bag in the house when i walk in and i see my grandma and dad on the couch and i'm not even gonna say what they were doing and my mom is walking past them like she didn't see anything so after that i called one of my aunts and asked if i could stay with her for a while and now i don't talk to any of them Every time about how I was almost kidnapped. So a little background information, I was 13 and it was the summer going into ninth grade. I was on a road trip with my family and we needed to stop for some gas. So we stopped at some random gas station and we see this lady get out of her car and walk in. No big deal though. 
So we're inside and we're waiting in line to use the bathroom. So we were in the front of the line and then that lady was behind us. And then there were a few people behind her. So as we're standing in line, she FaceTimed some guy. And then she starts pointing the camera at people around the store. And she would be like, oh, do you like this? And he would say yes or no. Well, then she points the phone at me. And then he goes, yeah, that's the one. And my mom and I were super creeped out about this because she was being super loud and she was taking a really long time at this gas station. So my mom goes into the bathroom and then she starts to talk to me. She starts asking how old I am, where I'm from, and if my mom and I were here with anybody else. Like for part two, part two about how I was almost kidnapped. So like I said, she starts to talk to me and ask me super personal questions. And I'm being vague about everything that I possibly can be. So I go in, I use the restroom after my mom. We grab some snacks and then she follows us around the whole store. And she didn't even use the bathroom. So we leave the store and we saw the car that she got out of and it was parked right next to our car. When originally it was parked all the way across the parking lot. And I'm guessing the man who she was on FaceTime with was in the car. And he was sitting right where my car door was was so my mom and i decide to walk around a little bit and this lady is just following behind us the whole time so we call my dad who was across the street at another store we told him about the situation so he comes and picks us up and then he sees the car pick the lady up and they start following us so then they followed us for about 25 to 30 freaking miles and then they ended up turning off on some random road and i have a feeling if my mom and i didn't pay such close attention to what they were doing i would have been kidnapped and trafficked tell me about my toxic best friend group so a little background information i was 16 and it was the end of ninth grade going into summer break and one day randomly these three girls added me on snapchat and put me into a group chat now i had seen them around school but i never said hi to them i was finding it very hard to make friends in ninth grade because everybody was so toxic anyways like i said they added me to a group chat and all of them said hi to me and usually I wouldn't respond to random people on Snapchat, but because I had seen them around school, I decided why not. And it was so random, they just started sending pictures of themselves into this group chat. And it low-key made me feel bad because I kind of hated my physical appearance. But anyways, they asked me if I wanted to be friends with them. Oh, and by the way, their names were Stacy, Savannah, and Emily. So of course I said yeah because it was hard for me to make friends. So fast forward, my birthday was coming up. So they asked me if we could hang out. They said they wanted to give me an early birthday present. So I said yes, of course. Like for part two. Part two about my toxic friend group. So like I said, they asked me if we could hang out to give me an early birthday present. So I said yeah. And Emily had a pool at her house, so they asked me if I wanted to go over there. And of course I said yeah, it was summertime and it was hot outside. Well, when I got there, they asked me to order the pizza and they said that I had to pay for it. So I said, yeah, because they were my besties at the time. So I used some of my birthday money to pay for the pizza for all of us. And when I got back to Emily's house, they were all already in the pool. So I was kind of mad. One, because they didn't go with me. And two, they were just hanging out without me. So we're sitting there eating the pizza. And then after, all three of them get in the pool and they start taking pictures with each other. Not even asking me to be in any pictures. So at that point, I was so annoyed. I was just like, you guys are being so rude. And Emily's like, what are you talking about? We didn't even do anything. And then, of course, Stacy and Savannah agreed. So I was like, one, you didn't even ask me to be in any pictures and you made me pay for the pizza for all of us. And she was like, you're ugly. We didn't want you in the pictures. So I threw the pizza away and went home. Story time, my best friend slept with my boyfriend on my birthday. So a little background information. I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. Well, I have this best friend who we are going to call Sarah. Her and I became super close over the summertime, but she was like on and off best friends with this other girl who we're gonna call Mackenzie. But I had this boyfriend who I was also really on and off with, and Sarah knew about all the problems within our relationship. Well, I guess I underestimated how close Sarah and Mackenzie were, because everything that I told Sarah, she went back and she told Mackenzie. And not to mention, Mackenzie was really close with my boyfriend. So of course, she told my boyfriend everything that I was saying. This ended up causing a huge fight between my boyfriend and I. Well, the night before my birthday, my boyfriend and I were going back and forth arguing. And around 12 a.m. on my birthday, I forced myself to fall asleep. And at around 1 a.m., I woke up to 20 Snapchat notifications. All from my boyfriend. And when I opened them, I saw the worst thing ever. Like for part two. 
to you about how my best friend slept with my boyfriend on my birthday. So like I said, I woke up at around 1 a.m. to 20 Snapchat notifications from my boyfriend. And I saw the absolute worst thing ever. The first five notifications were just him calling me names. And then all the other ones were just him doing stuff with my best friend. And you guys can already guess what I mean by doing stuff. So at this point, I was heartbroken. I was pissed off. But of course, because I got to have the receipts, I went and took a video off my sister's phone of everything that he sent me. In the morning, I woke up to a text from an unknown number. And it turned out to be my boyfriend's best friend saying that him and Sarah were now together. So my boyfriend asked me to meet up and apologize. So I met him at this park and he apologized to me, telling me that he wanted to get back together with me. But I told him to KMA and I left. Then Sarah came to my house and keyed my car. And then we fought on my front lawn. And then after that, she was texting me about how she was coming back to my house. Like for part three. Part three about how my best friend slept with my boyfriend. So like I said, she came to my house and she keyed my car. And I caught her, so I went outside. We fought on my front lawn. After she left, she kept sending me messages saying that she was coming back to my house so we could fight again. But she was blocked, so I didn't get any of the messages. And then my ex came to my house and brought me flowers. And this was all in a span of one day. So because it was my birthday party, my cousins were at my house. And I already told them everything that happened. So they went outside and they fought him. Well, then I ended up sending all the videos to his parents, her parents, his siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins who loved me. Then I also decided to take legal action and I sent the cops all of the screenshots of Sarah harassing me. And my sister got a video of us fighting, so I sent that to them too. Well, since she was 18 and I literally just turned 16, she got three months in county jail for minor harassment and minor physical altercations. So in the end, I think I won. Story time about how my best friend set me up to get cheated on. So a little background information, I was 16 and in 11th grade, and I went to a very strict boarding school. I was best friends with this girl who we're going to call Emma, and we were the closest out of our whole friend group. Well, our boarding school also had a building for all the boys, but it was like a mile or two away from our building. Well, the days that we had off, the juniors and seniors were allowed to go visit each other's campuses. Well, a couple of the senior boys put together a little celebration for the first day of school. So my friends and I got ready. We went to the party and my friend Emma pointed out this one group of guys. So we went over there. They were all super nice. But I hit things off with this kid who we're going to call Ethan. We exchanged numbers. Well, when we got back to the dorm, I told Emma about Ethan and she was like being super weird. She was like, "Ooh, you shouldn't date him. He's really sus. I would have thought that she wished that she got with Ethan, but she hit it off with one of the guys from the same friend group. So Ethan and I end up dating and Emma did not like that. Like, like for, for part, part three. Two. Part two about how my best friend set me up to get cheated on. So like I said, sooner or later, Ethan and I started dating and Emma did not like that. And Ethan was honestly the best boyfriend ever. Never saw any red flags or anything like that. So fast forward, Ethan and I have been dating for four months. Well, winter break rolled around. And you had a choice to just take the day off or you could stay and help the school clean up and stuff like that. So Ethan and I decided to go help at the school and he was just acting super different. It wasn't like cheating or anything like that, but something was off. Like he would tell me to go through his phone, but the weird thing was is he always deleted his messages with Emma. Well, the one day Emma sends me a video of Ethan making out with some girl. So I broke up with Ethan. He said it wasn't his fault, but he couldn't tell me why. Well, a month goes by and one of the other girls in our friend group says that she has to tell me something. Apparently she went through Emma and Ethan conversations and emma was blackmailing him with a video of him destroying school property she said that she was sent to the school if he didn't send her proof of him cheating on me now ethan and i have been dating for two years and emma still tries to reach out but everyone in our friend group cut her off story time about how i saw my boyfriend propose to another girl in front of me so a little background information at the time my boyfriend and i had been together for around four years we had two kids together, and our relationship was pretty rocky. Within the first year of us dating, he would cheat on me all the time, and both times that I was pregnant, he would cheat on me also. Now, after I popped out the second kid, our relationship was going pretty well. And if you're wondering why I didn't leave him when he was cheating on me all the time, well, it was mainly because I grew up in a broken home. And remembering how hard it was on me whenever my parents broke up, I didn't want that for them. Well, over the past few months, my boyfriend had been traveling all over the country with his dad, going to meetings and stuff because he was getting ready to take over half the company. Well, fast forward, it's a Thursday, and my boyfriend has a meeting with some associates who flew in from out of state. And later that night, we were supposed to get on a flight with our friends to go to the Bahamas. 
Like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend literally proposed to another girl right in front of me. So like I said, my boyfriend had a meeting with some associates who flew in from out of town. And that night we were supposed to be on a plane to the Bahamas with our friends. So while he was getting ready for this meeting, I went and I dropped the kids off early. And he went to this meeting and I drove our luggage over to our friend's house. Because they were just going to drive us to the airport. So my girlfriend and I are super pumped to go on this trip. So we decided to start drinking early and we went somewhere to get drinks. She suggests this high-end place because the guy at the bar has a crush on her and always gives her free drinks. So we're sitting there having a really good time drinking at the bar. So while we're sitting there, we hear a bunch of clapping and cheering coming from outside. So us being drunk and nosy, we go out there to see what's going on. And what are the chances I walk out there and my boyfriend is down on one knee in front of another girl? And I'm not very confrontational whenever I drink, so I told my best friend to just take me back to her house. When we got back, it was around 6 p.m. And my boyfriend tells me that he's just going to meet us at the airport like for part three. Part three about how my boyfriend proposed to another girl right in front of me. I know this is late, but better late than ever. So like I said, we left, I went back to her house, and my boyfriend has the audacity to text me, I'll just meet you guys at the airport. So my best friend's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to go beat him up? Of course I said no, so I told her and her boyfriend to just go to the airport while I figured out what I was going to do, and to not say a word. Which was hard for my best friend, because she was confrontational. As fuck. So I texted my boyfriend saying that I was sick and I just wasn't going to go to the Bahamas with them. When in reality, I was packing up our whole house, leaving him with only his clothes and his shoes. So I put all the stuff in storage and I just decided to move back to my mom's house. And yes, this was in a span of a few days. So the whole time that he was gone, I was acting like everything was okay. On the last day of the trip, I sent him a text saying that I knew about everything. And I said I never wanted to hear from him again and I never wanted him to see the kids again. And he took that quite literally. I never got a text back. Well, four months after all this happened, I soon find out that he got a new house in North Carolina with his new wife and they have a daughter on the way. Our next post is titled, My husband's boss just called me because he couldn't reach my husband. Told me, I know he took off, but can you please ask him to come in? He kissed me goodbye on his way to work eight hours ago, and I can't reach him either. He was dressed for work when he left today. I packed him his lunch, told him to have a great day at work. He said thanks and left. I have no idea where he is, why he said he was going to work if he wasn't. I can't reach him. His phone goes straight to voicemail. I don't know why he would take the day off. According to his boss, he's been taking every Thursday off. His exact words were, I know Thursdays are your husband's days off, and not tell me. And now in the comments, well, I'm guessing this isn't going to end well. Have you checked the bank accounts and credit cards for charges today? Might give some clues. While you're at it, check the mileage on his car every day and compare it with Thursdays. Damn, some of you have those great private investigator traits. Get an old phone with good battery and leave it on in the car. Low cost GPS tracker. Gotta have cell service and a logged in maps account though. Plot twist, the boss knows what he's doing and low key tipping off the wife. That's how I would have done it. Boss is absolved of messing with employee's life because of course they assumed wife knows about those days off. Well, it's either a long term affair or he's taking a class to surprise you. I wouldn't say a single damned word. Just start taking measures to protect your ability to have a roof over your head and a livelihood if it's an affair, or decide if you want to put up with it. No matter what, if your birthday, anniversary, and Christmas go by with the status quo, you'll know what to do. Don't assume infidelity gives any edge in custody. Do you all live near a casino? My mother's second husband got busted exactly like this, and it turned out he had a bit of a gambling addiction. My mom called him at his office, and the receptionist was like, Um, lady, isn't he homesick in bed? Also, maybe check your attic or closets you never look in for lots of stolen office equipment. And now on to the update. He goes to visit his brother every Thursday in a state penitentiary. He was ashamed to tell me he was in there. Edit to add, this is verified, he is telling the truth, and I'm not going to put why his brother is in jail or the length of his sentence. Thank you all for your kind words. To everyone who reached out with comments, messages, and awards, you are all lovely. This was scary for me. Thank you for the moral support. And copying for a comment for context on why he wasn't open about this, my husband's grandfather spent time in jail, his father as well, a long time ago in his youth. 
My husband was worried with his brother there as well. I was going to think it was an inevitability that he would wind up there too. In my husband's mind, he didn't want me to know that he comes from an entire family of what he calls broken men. And now in the comments, that also explains why the phone was off. I'm glad it was a lot better of an outcome than what most had thought. I just can't believe it was something as left field as this. Everyone in the original post was gritting their teeth for the usual cheating outcome. I'm almost relieved it's not that. How do you feel about his reason? Seems legitimate to me and I let out an oh thank goodness sigh when I read the update. Great news everyone, turns out his brother is a felon, huge relief. Seriously though, happy to hear there is an innocent explanation, relatively. Kind of reminds me of the one where the wife found a long hair in the shower. The husband let a homeless friend, who had long hair, shower there, and kept it quiet because he didn't want to out his friend as homeless. Reminds me of an episode of Malcolm in the Middle. Some boss at Hal's workplace are cooking the books, and when their diddle is discovered, they try to blame their embezzlement on poor Hal. But he's able to prove he didn't log the phony bookkeeping entries because they always happened on Fridays, and he'd be skipping out work on Fridays for years. And he presents as evidence a cigar box full of dated amusement park and movie tickets to prove his regular absences on all the days the embezzlements actually happened. At the conclusion, Hal is very proud of himself, but Lois is furious with him because she's been slaving away at Lucky Mart, clipping coupons, and washing out used paper towels in order to make the family's financial ends meet. While all the while, every Friday, Hal had secretly been blowing a bundle on himself, going to movie matinees, playing ski ball, and riding roller coasters. Am I the asshole for lashing out on my boyfriend after he insulted my parents because they kept asking about his divorced parents? I, 20 female, met my boyfriend, 20 male, in high school, but we both started dating nine months ago. He's a good guy, calm, and rarely gets angry. His parents aren't the best. When he was a kid, they were always busy with work, so he used to be left with his grandma, and whenever they were together, they fought. When my boyfriend was 17, his mum caught his dad cheating, and that's when the divorce was finalised. He doesn't like to talk about his parents. My parents, on the other hand, are happy together. So about one month ago, my boyfriend met my parents for the first time. My parents are the old school type. They think that divorce is selfish and it destroys relationships and your image in society, so it went well until the topic of his divorced parents was brought up. My parents were surprised, so they kept asking more. Like, why did the divorce happen? How did he feel when the divorce happened? Why didn't he stop them? Etc. Now, I know this was wrong, so I tried to stop them from asking about his parents, but they didn't. At the end, they said they want to meet my boyfriend's parents only because they want to be more close with the family. He agreed after a lot of hesitation. A few days later, me, my parents, my boyfriend, and his divorced parents were sitting together having dinner. The atmosphere was so tense that I already started regretting this. Halfway into the dinner, and his parents started arguing, probably because of some talk of divorce was brought up, and they were busy blaming each other. At that point, my boyfriend visibly looked like he was about to lose it. So instead of saying anything, he just got up, with me following him, as I wanted to apologize. The minute I started apologizing to him, he lashed out at me with saying things like, you know the condition between my parents, right? Yet you didn't stop your parents from organizing all of this, etc. I took all of the remarks that he was throwing at me, but then he brought up my parents and said, your parents are just like you, nosy. Don't they understand that not all couples have a fairy tale story like them? Even in that first meeting, they kept on asking me about my parents. Don't they have anything better to do than prying on others' lives? Can't they frickin' stay out of my family matters? Now, I knew he was mad at my parents, and it was understandable, but talking like that about them was not acceptable for me. 
So I argued back by saying, don't speak like that about my parents. They just wanted to know more about their only daughter's boyfriend. It's not their fault that your parents' relationship is effed up. And after like 15 minutes of arguing, he left along with his parents. It's been almost two weeks since me and my boyfriend have talked with each other, and now I'm starting to question whether I was the wrong one. My parents say I did the right thing, but my friends say that I went a bit overboard, and now I'm confused. I want to know whether I was really the one at fault. So Reddit, am I the asshole? And edit, I would like to add that this guy is my first boyfriend ever, and I am very open with my parents. I.e., they know everything about me, so they would obviously like to meet my first boyfriend and his family. I am his girlfriend too, and his parents also agreed for the dinner. They said that they would love to meet their son's first girlfriend and her family. They hate each other, but not their son. So all the people who think that the parents forced the other party to come, no they didn't. It was a mutual decision. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I feel like I might be the asshole because instead of talking calmly with my boyfriend, I lashed out at him, which just made the matters worse. And now in the comments, you're the asshole. Your parents were out of line and you took their side. Your boyfriend is correct about your parents. How the hell was your boyfriend supposed to stop his parents' divorce? Your parents are also out of touch with reality. You're the asshole. Your parents were rude and invasive, and you allowed it to happen despite knowing how he felt, and then berated him when he got predictably very upset with you? Lol? WTF? You're the asshole for defending your parents' behavior. It's one thing to say, please don't swear at me, I can't control them, but you are actually defending them. His parents' divorce is no one's business. Your parents are rude and an embarrassment and deserve to be cut off by boyfriend and his family. Everyone sucks here. I don't understand why you and your boyfriend allowed this to happen. No is a complete sentence. You're the asshole. How is this a question? There isn't any trying to stop your parents from asking questions. How about this? Hey guys, it's not your business, and the topic is obviously making boyfriend uncomfortable, so stop. There is nothing wrong with them trying to get to know him, but that's not what they were doing. They were sticking their nose in another family's business. You are lucky your boyfriend is as calm as he is. My response at the first dinner would have been, my parents' relationship is none of your business. Stop asking about it like it is, and if I caught any lip about it, I would have left without another word. Your family needs boundaries. Also, abso effing lutely insane that you all thought that it was a great idea to have a divorced couple over for dinner. Yeah, what could go wrong, right? Also, you're right. It isn't your fault his parents are divorced. It is your fault that you're a shitty partner and you actively made the whole situation worse for him. Good job. And now onto the update. Hi everyone, it's been a week since I made that post, and I've been recently getting messages asking me about what I did next, so here is an update. Since two weeks, I was busy with college events, so I didn't get time to call him. But after I made that post and read every comment, I started realizing how wrong I was. I felt horrible for not understanding myself that I was the wrong one. I decided that now I have to meet him to apologize, so I called and requested that I needed to see him. He just said okay, and we met at a cafe that evening. When he arrived, he just had a blank face, which made me realize that things will never be the same for us. I apologized to him for everything. For not stopping my parents from asking questions about his parents, for letting them organize that dinner, for lashing out at him, and for not apologizing earlier. Also, I felt like after this, his feelings for me must have changed, and as some of you said, I realized that I may not be the one for him, and he deserved a better girl who could understand him more clearly. So I added that if he now hates me and wants to break up, then it's okay. 
He finally spoke and admitted that what I said did hurt him. He said that he didn't like talking about his parents, but he didn't say that to my parents because he wanted them to have a good impression of him. He thought I would understand him, but I didn't. He also apologized for yelling at me. At the end, he confessed that he doesn't hate me, but the love that he had for me has decreased, and that if we continue being together, it would only hurt me because I still loved him, but he wouldn't be able to return the same love back, and he didn't want that. To be honest, that sentence did hurt me because I still love him and had a tiny hope that we would still be together. Sorry, I know this is selfish, but breaking up with him was the last thing I could do after all the pain he suffered because of me. So yep, we officially broke up. He said that we can still remain in contact, but I hope we don't. I also confronted my parents and told them what they did was extremely insensitive. But they said that as parents, it is their right to know everything about their child's partner and that it's good that we broke up because since he came from such a troubled family, they were worried that the same would happen with me if we both get married. I was bewildered because I didn't expect my parents to think like that. I told them that if they continued this behavior, I would stop introducing anyone to them. They were angry, but agreed. So yep, that's it. I also want to thank all the Redditors who were honest about how wrong my actions were. I am truly thankful to all of you, as it made me understand my fault, and I will try my best to improve myself. I also hope that my now ex-boyfriend finds a girl who would understand him better, and he stays happy. Thank you. And now in the comments, Shocked Pikachu Face. You took two weeks to call him, and you apparently love him? Clearly not as much as you think you do. Yes, you're right. If she really loved him and wanted to make up, she would have made time. This is what I took from this. If she had called that day, maybe she'd be able to fix things. Apparently her boyfriend wasn't important enough to call right away. OP is not ready for a relationship. You should probably reevaluate your relationship with your parents, especially the relation to your personal life and how much about it they know. Otherwise this or something worse will happen. OP, I think you've taken a real lesson from all of this, and that is to be applauded. A ton of other people would have dug in and argued about why they were right, and the rest of the world was delusional. But you read the comments and took it in, and you had real growth. I know it's not the outcome you wanted, but to be honest, this was a valuable experience. You saw firsthand how your parents treated your significant other, and how your significant other's boundaries were not respected in the name of protecting you. Hopefully this is a wake-up call for you that your parents suck. I like the part where her parents think that he's the one with a troubled family. Their ability to respect boundaries and not pass judgment is non-existent. They are so smug and just over the top with their intrusive and unwelcome examination of guests. And also, since the parents believe you shouldn't get divorced because your social reputation will take a hit, I wonder at the state of their own marriage. We can't be sure that it's happy fairy tale days. Better to be happily divorced than unhappily married. Why didn't he stop them divorcing? What was he supposed to do, steal the paperwork? No, he was supposed to find his long lost twin at summer camp and set up an elaborate ruse to make his parents realize the love they've always had for each other. Wow, OP, your parents must be fun at parties. Hi, nice to meet you for the very first time. Do you have any trauma you don't wanna talk about? Excellent, let's talk about it. Let's pass every frickin' detail until you hate us and it literally destroys relationships. This will be the topic of conversation for the next three hours or until you have a panic attack, whichever comes second. Our next post is titled, Poisoned at Family Dinner. I'm currently on vacation visiting family for Christmas. I'm 20 female, a vegan by choice. However, I am allergic to red meat. I was bitten by a lone star tick which caused me to develop a severe allergy to meat. My family makes fun of me for being vegan, though I cook for myself for all meals and I don't mention it much at all. Anyway, I guess some of my extended family didn't know the severity of my allergy because my younger cousin chopped up some steak, extremely finely I guess, and put it in my butternut squash soup. Shortly after I ate some of my soup, I couldn't breathe and was breaking out in hives. I woke up in the hospital on Christmas Day. My mom called an ambulance when she saw my face was swelling. My cousin didn't say sorry when I started breaking out in hives. He started laughing and told me what he had done. I woke up to a text of him saying, stop overreacting, you need protein, with a picture of a slaughtered cow. His parents aren't very well off. In fact, I don't think they even have insurance. 
I just want to know, should I pursue a legal case, or is that an overreaction? And now in the comments, that text is essentially a confession, and it doesn't do anything to create the impression that he didn't know the severity. It may be read as him accusing you of exaggerating it. You have medical evidence that that isn't true, so let the police sort it out. He has more than earned the hassle. Have you considered filing a police report? And OP says, it hasn't really crossed my mind. My boyfriend told me to post here for advice. I just don't want to tear my family apart. You can legally record phone calls without the other party's permission in Nebraska, but not in-person conversations. I would ring up and get them to confess and ask them to reimburse you anything you have to pay out of pocket for the hospital stay. You said they don't have much? Tell them to sell your cousin's belongings to pay if they can scrounge the cash up. Sending you messages like that after you were taken to hospital unconscious shows the kid needs to be taught how serious it was. You literally could have died. Imagine if you went to the toilet and no one noticed you were gone for 30 minutes. Make a police report as well. Get a reference number for it so you have a record of it. People that stupid will probably try again to prove that you somehow faked a medical emergency. You were not tearing the family apart. You were making an idiot face the repercussions for almost killing you. Probably because of the idiocy his parents fed him about you being vegan. And OP says, You're right, he does need to be taught a lesson. But I don't want him to go to jail or have this on his record permanently. If his parents have homeowners or renters insurance, their liability coverage may take care of your bills. You would have to show that your cousin knew or should have known that you were allergic to meat and knowingly deceived you. It's not clear from your narrative if that's the case. Also, the insurance wouldn't cover you if your cousin intentionally did this. Did you previously inform the cousin or the owner of the kitchen in use, in writing, that you had this allergy? Was this soup made for you, or did you prepare it yourself and walk away? Lastly, do you have medical bills because of this that were not covered by insurance? And OP says, Yes, everyone in the family knows I have a meat allergy. I just don't think he thought that it was very serious, or he thought that I was just an annoying vegan pretending to be allergic to meat. I'm honestly not sure. I prepared my soup the day before, and I just heated it in the microwave. I put it in the microwave and took it out myself. I turned around for one second to get water, and returned to the dinner table to eat my soup with my family. And now on to the update. Hey guys, I first just want to thank you all for the support regarding my last post. I've had a free consultation with a personal injury lawyer, and have filed a police report like many of you suggested. I let my cousin, aunt, and uncle know this, and they immediately ended up offering to pay my hospital bill, and ambulance ride, in full. My cousin gave me a half-hearted apology, and his parents told me they won't be leaving the house for the next year, and will be severely punished for this. I have decided not to press charges. I don't really have the money or time for it, and all I needed was my medical expenses paid. I just plan on not going to any family gatherings where he is for a long, long, long time. Thanks again for all the love and support. And now in the comments, what is it with people who don't believe in allergies? Who thinks giving an allergic person the food they can't eat is somehow good for them? I can't fathom this at all. And edit, personally, I have a bunch of allergies too. But with food, I really just have intolerances to both dairy and eggs. I just say I'm allergic because it's easier. Also, since so many people are telling crazy stories about their allergies, once a girl sat next to me wearing a fuzzy sweater, and within 10 minutes my eyes were red and I was sneezing uncontrollably. I didn't even touch her clothes, but she had to take the sweater off and put it away. That was when I found out I was allergic to mohair. People like this are baffling to me. My grandma is 87. I just mentioned to her on the phone that I recently found out that I'm allergic to almonds, and she thanked me for letting her know so that she would avoid recipes with almonds when I visit. It is that easy. She didn't need me to prove it, she just wanted a heads up so that there weren't any uncomfortable incidents. And she accepted it because she loves me and wants the best for me. People who test your allergies like that don't have your best interests in mind, and it's best to cut them out. I'm glad that OP's hospital bills are being paid by his idiot cousin's family. Good call to avoid that cousin in the future.